Rodis Franklin Pete Drake started his musical career playing piano and singing with his brothers Bill and Jack during their father's church services. Young Pete became fascinated with the mysterious, hard-to-tame steel guitar when he heard Jerry Bird on the Grand Ole Opry. Self-taught and playing by ear, Pete became good enough to work with bands on radio and TV shows in the Atlanta area. In 1959, Drake moved to Nashville. His big break came a year later when singer Roy Drusky invited Drake to play on a recording session. Pete Drake quickly became one of the busiest session musicians in Nashville. Drake created his own talk box, a device that allowed a player to blend vocal sounds with the sounds of an instrument. Drake and his talking steel guitar can be heard on numerous recordings, including his popular instrumental, Forever. Pete Drake's talking steel guitar would influence rock musicians Peter Frampton and Joe Walsh. Not limited to recording with country artists, Drake's steel can be heard on Bob Dylan's John Wesley Harding and Nashville Skyline albums. After working with Dylan, Drake played on albums by former Beatles Ringo Starr and George Harrison. In the mid-1960s, famed producer Billy Sherrill began using Pete Drake as his go-to steel player, enlisting him to play on a bevy of hit records. Drake died in 1988, but he remains one of American music's prime innovators. His work as a musician, producer, and publisher made a grand difference in the history of country music, and he is now the first pedal steel guitarist to take a place in the Country Music Hall of Fame.